Hi there, everybody. Welcome to another Chem Complete episode. I am Professor Tomney, and in today's episode, we are going to continue discussing acids and bases, and we want to take a look at what defines something as being a strong acid or base versus a weak acid or base. And that's a prerequisite before we really get too far into discussing pH and some of those other things that people associate with acids. We really want to know what does it mean to be a strong acid or base or a weak acid or base. So that is what we are going to be talking about on the channel right now. All right, everybody, thank you for joining us today. I really appreciate you using Chem Complete for all of your learning needs, and let's get started. So one of the things that most students will come across when they are in general chemistry or high school chemistry is they will be given a very short list of what's called the six strong acids and the six strong bases. Now, the first thing I want to say before I even put these down is that you have to understand when you're first being introduced to the concepts of acids and bases, it's kept relatively generalized. And so acids and bases and their strength are all kind of on a sliding scale. And you can find some that are far stronger than what might be on this list or certain combinations of them that may give like a super acid or something of that nature. However, these, generally speaking, are going to suit you well as far as what is strong versus what is weak, at least when you're working with uh, general chemistry classes. Okay, so the six strong acids, we'll go ahead and we'll start with the acids. The probably best known acid uh, is hydrochloric acid. So HCl is on this list, along with its other halogen counterparts, HBr and HI. Now, hydrofluoric acid has gained some notoriety, especially after the series Breaking Bad, and it's become a little bit popular, but hydrofluoric acid is technically a weak acid as far as the equilibrium setup is concerned, because one of the things that's going to define a strong versus a weak acid is whether it's in equilibrium. And hydrofluoric acid does not fit the bill for a strong acid compared to hydrochloric, hydrobromic, and hydroiodic acid. Okay, another one probably equally as well known as the HCl is H2SO4. And H2SO4 is sulfuric acid, a very strong acid. It gains a lot of its strength because the sulfate ion has so many resonance forms that help stabilize the negative charges left behind on the conjugate base that it can really toss out protons at a high rate. Okay, another one that's very well known is nitric acid, HNO3. And then the last one on this list is actually probably one of the scariest of the bunch to work with as far as its oxidizing power. You usually need special hoods and things like that to work in. Um, and that's perchloric acid, so HClO4. A little less known, but certainly a acid to be respected on that list. Okay, and then we come to the bases. So everybody's favorite base that most people know is sodium hydroxide. So you're going to see that the six strong bases are all going to be hydroxide based, which kind of goes back to the Arrhenius definition. And again, I just want to remind you that this is a bit of a sliding scale and that there are going to be bases, uh, something maybe like sodium hydride, for instance, that can act far more powerfully than sodium hydroxide ever could. Um, but that is usually found a little bit more as we start to move into organic chemistry and we start discussing the deprotonation of carbons or things of that nature. So anyway, sodium hydroxide is the first one on this list. And then the alkali metals give a few others. So lithium hydroxide is also on that list. So is potassium hydroxide. Then as you move over to the alkaline earth, you've got a couple Calcium hydroxide is found on that list. Barium hydroxide is found on that list as well. And then finally, strontium hydroxide is the last of the six strong that are typically taught at a general chemistry level. Okay, so these are your six strong acids and your six strong bases. Now, what about if we want to define on a more chemical level 
what it means to be a strong acid or a strong base. Okay, and we'll kind of focus on acids more because we're going to lead into pH and then pOH is the flip side of that for bases. But what does it mean to be a strong acid? So I could give you this list, right? As a professor, I could hand this to you and say, just accept this. These are the strong acids. But there has to be a good reason as to why. And the reason, it turns out, is it has to do with how well the compound can throw out its protons or its H pluses and dissociate. And so by definition, we're going to say that a strong acid okay, will undergo 100% dissociation. And so what that means is that if I put something like HCl into solution, 100% of the HCl will become H plus right and Cl minus it will all go into this form there will not be any HCl that exists anymore a hundred percent of it will dissociate over and you can say the same thing for bases so a strong base will undergo a hundred percent dissociation it'll give off all of its hydroxides when it comes apart in solution or dissociates in solution so that is a better working definition of what it means to have a strong acid. So a strong acid will undergo 100% dissociation when it's put into solution. So what does that mean about a weak acid? Well, that must mean that a weak acid is going to be or is in equilibrium. And so you do not have, by definition, 100% dissociation, right? Because in equilibrium, if it's 100% dissociation, it's unilateral. It's one way, unidirectional. And so in something like, let's say we've got HF, right? And let's just use water. So we put HF into water. It doesn't 100% go over into the other form. So it will give some of its H plus off to the water, which will then pick that up to become H3O plus. Plus, you'll also get some F minus in return. But the key here is that there's a balance, right, between both of these sides. There is not going to be a 100% H3O plus and F minus side, which would mean that it has fully dissociated itself. And so you get into equilibrium and talking about KEQs and things of that nature. They're really called KAs when you start talking about it for an acid. But... The point here is that it does not fully dissociate when it's placed into solution. And I just want to mention here, because we kind of use H plus and H3O plus. So H3O plus is known as the hydronium ion. And the hydronium ion is simply a water that has picked up an acidic proton. Okay, in chemistry, H3O plus and H plus are equal or interchangeable with one another. So when you see H plus or H3O plus, you can consider them to be the same thing as far as a chemical species is concerned. And a lot of students will get confused when we start to head into the equilibrium portion of the acid-base chemistry because they see H3O plus and then they're like, where's the H plus if I'm trying to work with acid? H3O plus is the same thing as H plus when you're dealing with an aqueous environment. And so you want to kind of see the two as interchangeable with one another. Okay, so just to recap what we kind of went over here, you've got six strong acids and bases that are generally given to you as knowns in general chemistry, that these are the strong ones. So what helps define them as being strong? The fact that they have a 100% dissociation when they are placed into a solution, meaning they all go over into their ion form. They are strong electrolytes is another way of putting that. And then everything else is going to be considered a weak acid at this point, and that means it will be in equilibrium. It will not have a 100% dissociation into the ion form, and then that can potentially lead into, okay, if I want to find how acidic this solution is, I'm going to have to set up something like an ice chart uh, from the equilibrium lectures that we've learned about 
in order to find the concentration of H3O plus, and then I can manipulate that into pH and stuff like that, which is another lecture coming up. Okay, and then finally H3O plus and H plus are equal to one another, meaning they're the same thing or they are almost synonymous, right, with each other when you're talking about acidic environments. So the next thing that we'll take a look at for acid base, which isn't overly difficult but is important, is when we start talking about for weak acids and bases, even for strong ones, but especially for weak ones, uh, the idea of conjugate acids and conjugate bases. So just to give you a brief preview, when you've got an acid here, so in this case we would call this an acid, and we would call this a base because it's taking on the H+. So from a Bronsted-Lowry definition, this is the base, and if you don't know what that means, go back and check the previous lecture to this where we defined acids and bases. And this HF coordinates with this F-, minus. so this F- minus is going to be a base, and more specifically, we call it the conjugate base, okay, to the HF, and the H2O, which is a base here, is going to create a conjugate acid. And so we're going to take a look at some examples of that, learning how to con uh, label acid base, conjugate acid, conjugate base based on what you see. And then we'll also talk about the strength, the relative strength of conjugates to their counterparts in the next lecture. So if you would like, head on over to chemcomplete.com. We've got lots of free resources over there. There's, way to support, there's ways to support the channel. You can buy guides. Um, there's all sorts of other ways. But again, subscribing and just being present with our content, choosing ChemComplete as your learning option is one of the best ways to continue to support the channel. Thank you so much for choosing us for your learning needs, and I will see everybody in the next lecture.